Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming old Catholic Church of the Reformed Catholic Church. I am also the servant general of a small Franciscan community, the Order Franciscans of Mercy. And I want to begin by wishing all mothers a blessed and glorious Mother's Day. It was 31 years ago this week that just three days before Mother's Day that my beautiful mother was called home to the Lord. And I have to say that I miss her, and I'm sure everyone out there that has had a mother pass misses them. And if you're like me, you still talk to them, and you still think of, oh, I got to tell my, oh, that's right, she's not here with me, but she knows, she sees what I'm doing. I believe that. I believe my mom is in heaven. So, to all the mothers out there, may God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you. And to all the children out there, learn to respect your mother, love your mother, care for your mother. You only have one mother. And it isn't until after they're gone that we often realize how much they did for us, even as we got older in life, and how important they are in our lives, in our formation. Today, I've entitled my homily, We Are Being Called. And every mother out there has been called by God to be that, like our Blessed Mother. Holy Father, keep those you have given me true to your name so that they will be one of us. These words of Jesus are found in the Gospel of John and we're a prayer that Jesus offered to his almighty Father, God. Jesus is still uttering these words on our behalf today. We are being called and all mothers are called to reflect the good in life. We are called to serve God by serving God's children, by caring for them, loving them, watching out for them, making sure that they have the essentials of life. The prayer finishes with these words. As you sent me into this world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they too may be consecrated to the truth. The truth. And where do we find that truth that Jesus speaks of? We find it in Holy Scripture. We find it clearly explained in the second reading of the day. John tells us God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God is within us and we are within God. His love will complete us and make us whole, just as a mother's love completes the child. It is the nurturing love of a mother that brings a child into life. It is the mother that a child runs to when they are hurt because they know that the mother is going to reach out. 
Oh, I know there are some of you skeptics out there who are saying, yeah, not all mothers. My mother was this. Or I've, I've heard some horrible stories. And I find it very hard to believe that any mother could hurt a child, that any mother could reject a child. And yet, some parents do, and some mothers do. They reject their child because the child isn't what they wanted them to be. God creates everyone for a purpose, and everything that God does has a purpose. We are called to live and to find out what that purpose is. We are called to serve God. God creates all things for reasons known to him. And everything that God has created is good. So how can a parent or a mother reject a child because her child happens to have been born with an attraction to the same sex? Or a child is not perfect, that a child has an impediment of some sort, physical, maybe mental. That child needs more love. God is love, and if anyone, as John says, if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. For Deus caritas est, God is love. I don't know why this is difficult to understand. I find it to be as clear as crystal. Why do we put restrictions on things? You know, my mother and my aunts and my grandparents filled me in on the difficulties they had in Ireland. My mother was born in Ireland. She didn't come here until she was about 13 years of age. And her life was not easy. She saw her mother, her own mother, die in childbirth. <laughs> All the while, her father and her uncle were in the next room, drunk and arguing. It left an impression on my mother. My mother hated alcohol. But sadly, she married an alcoholic. But she loved him, and she stayed with him in spite of difficult times. Strange thing was that when my mother was really sick, and after my dad had died, when I was playing Pavarotti, my mother would start calling my dad's name because my father's singing voice was like that of Pavarotti. My father did sing professionally, and he had an illness, and that's what alcoholism is. And there are some people out there who have other illnesses, addictions to drugs, to food. You can have addictions to a whole lot of things, and in a way they are an illness, and you need specialized care to move on, move forward, and to conquer those addictions. And you can conquer them, especially if you place God in your life, if you center your life around God. We are called to live in God, to live as Jesus instructed us. It's easy. You know, Jesus said, seek and you will find. To seek means to explore, to open up yourself and reflect on the historical truths. Scripture has to be taken in light of the customs of the times that it was written in. We need to ask ourselves, if Jesus were walking this earth today, and I and members of my order often ask if St. Francis 
were walking the streets of Boston or Upton or Franklin or New York City, what would he be doing? How would he react and how would people react to him? They probably would react exactly as they reacted to St. Francis in his time and as they reacted to Christ. They refuse, they reject, because the message that they were giving is not what society, for the most part, wants to hear. They don't want, they want to be absorbed in themselves. They want as much as they can get. The idea of, of living with one tunic, one pair of shoes, simply the simplified, simplest form of life is foreign to most people. And when people follow that path, they are often ridiculed. Christ was ridiculed, St. Francis was ridiculed. Now, I'm not saying that it's right for everybody, but you don't need to be greedy. You don't need to be excessive. And you need to share. Share the gifts that God has given you with those who are in need. Women, women are a special, special breed of God's creation. For the most part, they are all loving and caring naturally. Women need to have a more prominent role, I feel, in the church than they do. And I'm glad to see that St. Francis, or rather, I, I'm sorry, I'm canonizing Pope Francis ahead of time. But Pope Francis is advocating for a more prominent role for women and has even suggested that we might return to having women as deacons as they were in the early church. And you know what a deacon's role is? To proclaim the gospel. Do you know and watch, if you watch a mass from Rome, it isn't Pope Francis who proclaims the gospel. It's a deacon, because that's their role. If there is a bishop, if the pope were here, and we have a deacon, the deacon has to proclaim the gospel. And in the early church, there were woman deacons. It's written in Acts of the Apostles. And I think that if more women were involved in the hierarchy of the church, we would find even a more loving and compassionate church because it's their instinct to be motherly. So on this Mother's Day, a day set aside to honor all mothers, We need to reflect on that concept. We know that all of the apostles were married and therefore had wives and children. And there were popes who were married. And I, as I said, there were women deacons. So why don't we have them now? Well. There seems to be a lot of answers as to why, but one of them was money. You know, the root of all evil, money. The church was afraid that if there were married priests and the priests died, the women, their wives, 
would lay claim to church property. And the other thing was that when education started becoming costly, they were afraid that they'd have to edu pay for the education of the children of a priest. And so, let's not allow priests. But you know what? In the Eastern churches, priests are married. Now, a married priest can never become a patriarch or a bishop, but they have married priests in the Eastern Church because that's the way it was in the early church. It's a Western tradition. And let's face it, the Anglican Church has married priests. The Lutheran Church has married priests. The Methodist Church has married and so on. It's only the Church of Rome. We, the Reformed Catholic Church, allow for married priests. We allow for women deacons and women priests. We, we, at this particular moment in time, do not happen to have any. But it is in our canons that we can. Because that's the way it was in the early church. You and I have been called by God to live a life that reflects the teachings of Jesus Christ. And the teachings of Christ could never, ever be clearer than they are. Love one another as I have loved you. When you love someone, you do not under any circumstances want to cause them any pain or suffering. When you love someone, you try to shield them from harm, just as mothers try to shield their children from harm. Even in nature, the mother hen, the mother sheep, a cat or a dog, they nurture. There was a wonderful, wonderful pictures on Facebook recently and on TV of a panda mother and her little cub and how she was teaching him and watching over him. That's what mothers do and that's what our Blessed Mother does. Way back a few centuries ago, when I was young, it was the tradition in the church to have a day set aside in the month of May to honor our Blessed Mother. And there would be a procession and somebody would be chosen to crown our Blessed Mother with flowers. In fact, there is the hymn, We crown thee with flowers. I forget the tune exactly. But it was a beautiful thing, and all the children who had received their first Holy Communion would be dressed in their whites. And there would be the Knights of Columbus, there would be all these people in the procession to a cry, uh, where a statue of Our Lady, and usually almost every single church, had a statue of Our Lady and some outside, and some churches were dedicated to Our Blessed Mother. And that tradition for some reason died, like so many wonderful traditions that we had. I'd love to see it revived because it is acknowledging the special role that mothers have. Just as our Blessed Mother had a special role in raising our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and she was there right to the end, at the foot of his cross. And one of the most beautiful pieces of art, and I did get to see it in person, the Pieta, where 
the body of Christ is laid across our Blessed Mother's lap shows in the face and everything the hurt and yet the tenderness that our Blessed Mother had just as almost every single mother on the face of the earth has for their children. Yes, there are exceptions, just as there are exceptions to every rule. But a, a mother, most mothers, are loving, caring, compassionate, merciful, all the qualities that our Lord and Savior wants all of us to have men and women. If we had more love, more love for each other, more love for all God's creatures, the world would not be in the mess that it's in. You and I are being called to actively live God's love. We are being called to do all that we can in our power to bring about change in the attitudes that are causing so much pain and suffering in this world. On this Mother's Day, if you still have your mother with you, give her something special, treat her to something, let her know how much you love her and respect her and thank her Thank her, thank her, thank her. Thank her for all that she has done. And also, while you're at it, thank our Heavenly Mother, the Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, for being there and ask her to intercede on your behalf to her beloved son. I'm going to close with a prayer that I wrote on the feast of our blessed mother, December the 8th, 1957. I call it a sinner's prayer. And it goes like this. O Mary Immaculate, Virgin so fair, mother of our savior, please hear my prayers. Intercede, dearest mother, to your heavenly son. Tell him I am truly sorry for all the many wrongs and sins that I've done. Ask him to guide me by the graces of the Holy Spirit's truth in all of my ways, so that I may give him glory, honor, and praise when I come to the end of my earthly days. Until we meet again, I am Father Bob Janine, and I'm inviting you to please visit our websites, www.orderfranciscansofmercy.org and www.mission, word mission, M-I-S-S-I-O-N-S-T-S-E-R-G-I-U-S dot org. And there you will learn about our ministry, and if you're interested and think maybe God is calling you to serve him in some extra special way as a religious, a priest, a deacon, a brother, a nun, put your cursor on the tab that says syllabus and you'll learn how you can become a member of our community. And while you're there, consider making a donation by putting your cursor on the donate button which will take you to PayPal, and it will, you can safely and securely make a donation to the ministry. All the work of our ministry is totally and completely dependent on the generosity of our donors. Without their don our donors, we could not do any of the work that we do. So may God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.